So here's the solution to question one in the probability random variable exercises. We're going into the domain of um, medical trials, so to say. And what we have is uh, some hormone that is going to be given in one of three doses, doses A, B or C, and conditional on the the dosage, the uh, the mouse on which we are trying this shows signs of regression. So what we're going to have, let's let's call accretion, let's call that ev event x. Okay, so the probability for x given dosage a is 0.2. Probability of x given dosage B is equal to 0.5 and the probability of X given dosage C is 0.8. Okay, so in the higher the dosage, assuming that B is higher than A and so forth, the higher the probability of the uh, guinea pig or the mouse here showing some sort of regression. Now, we we'll have an experiment where 10 mice are being exposed to to a dosage and six show signs of regression. Okay. So in slight violation of uh, notation we we'll, we'll call this x equals six. So this is a sort of a binomial experiment where we have a success if you can call it success probability which depends on the dosage. Okay, so this is our success probability. And we now want to figure out what's the probability of this happening, i.e. we are having six out of ten successes in inverted commas, depending on the three levels. Okay. So one. What we're gonna calculate is the probability that we have six successes given that we are have administering dosage A. Okay. So how do we calculate this? So what we're basically dealing with here is a binomial random variable and I uh, you know or you have learned or you can check that to calculate such a probability what we need to do is we need to calculate basically how many in how many ways can we get six successes out of ten this is this term times six successes times the success probability for a the success probability is 0 0.2 so 6 to the power of Point, and that's of course it's of course wrong but we need the astute listener to realize that this is of course the other way around we want six successes if they're independent then the probability for these is 0 0.2 to the power of 6 so 0 0.2 being the success probability times we have four non-successes so that's one minus the success probability to the power of 4. Okay, So this is what we need to calculate. And then equally we want to calculate that for the different dosages and the probability that x is equal to 6 given dosage c. And let's just see what changes here. now. In all three probabilities, what we need is this term at the beginning, and then with dosage p, so the success probability is 0 0.5. So we have 0 0.5 to the power of 6 times 0 0.5 to the power of 4, or that would just be 0 0.5 to the power of 10. And here we have 0 0.8 to the power of 6 times 0 0.2 to the power of of four. Alright. So we need in all of these we need this 
6 out of 10. So let's just calculate that. 1, 6 out of 10. We know that is 10 factorial divided by 6 factorial times 10 minus 6 factorial. So, and that is going to be 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 and the, the uh, 6 to 1 are going to be cancelled out, that was a minus here, by this one and what is left is 4 factorial in the bottom, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and this is going to be 210. So there are 210 ways to get 6 successes out of 10 draws. So this we just need to calculate and of course you can uh, check that with Excel. What we find is these probabilities. 5.1 and 0.0881. Okay, so we can see that given our dosage is B, the probability of getting six successes is 21% rounded. Given our dosage is A, that is the dosage where we have the lowest chance of aggression will find that there's a, only a very small probability, half a percentage point approximately, of actually finding six mice that show aggression. All right, so that is question one. Question two, part two, assuming that each of the three dosage levels were, were equally likely to have been administered, Use Bayes' theorem to evaluate the likelihood of each of the dosage levels given that 6 out of 10 mice were observed to react this way. So, in a way, what we now want is, let me do this in a different color, is we want the probability, so here we calculated conditional probabilities conditional on the dosage. In a way, we now want the probabilities the other way around. We want the probability that we administer dosage A given we observed six cases of aggression. Okay, so this is this is what we now want to calculate. And we use Bayes' theorem to basically figure out that this is pro the same as the joint probability of A and x equals 6, so that is sort of an event, divided by the probability of x equals 6. And we want this for basically all the different dosages. Okay, B and this is for A, and we also want to calculate that for B and C. So let's actually write this down to make that clearer. So we also want the probability for B conditional on X equals to 6. So that's probability of B and X equals 6 divided by the probability of X equals 6, the unconditional one, and the probability of C C and x equals 6 divided by the probability, marginal probability of x equals 6. So let's see what can we not calculate in here. Turns out this guy we cannot calculate. We have no information about the marginal probability of getting x equals 6. Well, actually, it turns out we don't need it. What we can further simplify is we have here this joint probability, and of course, you know that this is the same as the probability of x being equal to 6 conditional on a times 
the marginal probability of A. And here I'll just have that Px is equal to 6. I'll write that in red. And we have exactly the same here. X equal to 6 conditional on B times the probability of B. And here the probability of x equal to 6 conditional on c times the marginal probability of c and in each case the denominator is still missing so here we have the marginal probability of x equals 6 actually it turns out if we are certain that one of these uh, three dosages was administered, we could calculate that probability. But as you can see, it appears in all three terms. So in a way, if we want to compare these likelihoods of having either administered A, B or C, we don't really need them. And why don't we need that? Let's continue here. This, this probability is of course nothing else is exactly what we calculated up here. Okay, so here we have 0 0.0055 and then the probability of having administered A was, as we were given the information, a third. And here this bit is of course just what we calculated here. The result was 21% or point 2051 and again we were given the, pro the marginal probability and here of course we have a similar result times a third and each of this again needs to be divided by probability of x equals 6 x equals 6, the marginal probability. So now you can see that everything here cancels out in the sense that there is a common component to each of these terms and that common component is this bit and that appears everywhere. So really these likelihoods only differ to to the calculations which we've done here, which entered this calculation. So it turns out that if we know that it's equally likely that one of the three doses has been administered, if we now want to judge from the fact that we observed six aggressive mice, we would have to say it is most likely that we administered B. Okay, this is most likely, it has the highest probability and it's second likely that we administered C and third likely that administered A and we couldn't have relative probabilities here. Now the only reason that we can read that straight off these probabilities which we had here was because we were given the information that the the dosages were equally likely to have been administered. Okay, That's why this one-third appeared everywhere and therefore didn't make a difference. If that wasn't the case then we would have potentially different likelihoods and it may then even be that it was more likely to, for instance, have administered dosage C. Okay, so that information was absolutely crucial.